there was an NBA trade yesterday, and it's your classic NBA trade. Everybody has convinced themselves they're significantly better, and I'm not sure anybody is. I liked it for all the teams, but it didn't really solve major issues. So the Celtics get Kristaps Porzingis, but they gave up Marcus Smart and still don't have a true facilitator. It doesn't solve the Tatum-Jalen Brown deal, which is odd at times, and Porzingis gets hurt a lot. But I do believe they're better offensively, and it was time to move off Marcus Smart. The Grizzlies get Marcus Smart. Okay, but they had to give up Tyus Jones, who's a better, more dynamic offensive player than Marcus Smart. But Marcus Smart, sort of a Dylan Brooks personality, a tough guy, but more of an adult, so he sort of solves that issue. He helps, but they lost Tyus Jones. Washington got Tyus Jones. He could be the best player in this whole thing. He's really, really good. In fact, the Grizzlies were better when Tyus Jones was on the floor than when Ja Morant was on the floor. Look it up. But they had to give up Bradley Beal and Kristaps Porzingis in the last week. So they're not better. But this is what NBA trades do. They're exciting. They're fun. Big names move. Emerging stars move. I get Porzingis to the Celtics. Let's talk them. Uh, First of all, Al Horford's old and aging, and Robert Williams can't stay healthy. Number two is Giannis, Jared Allen, Bam Adebayo, Joel Embiid. It's nice to have an active big that can give you some offense. Number three is, I could argue the NBA is now pivoting to big again. Seven foot three, runs the floor, shoots threes. You know what he is? You know what Kristaps Porzingis is? He's Victor Wembanyama eight years ago, just not as good. A seven three guy that can catch it, shoot it, move, slash. He's just not as good as Victor Wembanyama. But that's kind of eight years ago. The NBA is getting more European more skilled, and big guys now shoot threes. And, I mean, you look at the NBA. When I grew up as a kid, you needed back-to-the-basket centers. And then you went to, like, Jordan and Kobe wings. And then it was small ball. Then it's 3 and D guys. Now we're pivoting to European bigs that are highly skilled and really super hard to defend. So Boston got one of those. And he does make them a better offensive team. But they're still not very good at facilitating the offense. And Marcus Smart's assists got better every year, about six a game now, six and a half. But he's not a true facilitator. I don't have a problem moving off him. I suggested that five or six times over the last month. It's just he's going into year 10. I got one finals appearance. He's not an elite offensive guard. And defensive guards age quickly. I do like the fit in Memphis for him, but you had to give up a lot to get him. But Portland's the most, inter- uh, Boston's the most interesting team here because they have the highest ceiling. Washington's in a total rebuild. Memphis is trying to rebuild their chemistry in their locker room, and Boston's trying to finally get a title. They've already been to the finals with this group. Now they need the bag. Now they need the trophy. So it doesn't answer. This is classic NBA trade. Everybody's fired up for their team. Wizards are like, yeah, we lost Porzingis and Beal, those bums, but we got Tyus Jones. They're going to win 15 games, but I like Tyus Jones. Memphis is like, hey, we got an adult in the room. Yeah, but you lost Dylan Brooks and Tyus Jones. Pretty good players. There's no guarantee you'll be better. The West will be better next year. And Boston's like, we got Porzingis, who's hurt all the time, just like your other center, Robert Williams, and you still have a point guard issue. So I, I, I like the fit for all of them. Uh, I don't think it solves any current issues as much as the teams think. Um, But I think, I do think Boston, and and we said this over and over, it's, it's time to move around the pieces a little bit. Marcus Smart's now becoming an old defensive guard with limitations offensively. Let's move it. Got your two wing stars, got to pay both. Let's go get a big who can run the floor. I like it. Doesn't solve everything. Think it makes them better offensively. Maybe it makes them better defensively. Doubt it. But that's why NBA trades are fun. Full of hype, full of hope. And all three of those teams today are absolutely sure they're significantly better and won the trade. Okay, so um, the elephant in the room on Aaron Rodgers is yeah, the Jets are kind of dysfunctional and not a perfect roster. So Mike Tannenbaum said yesterday, former NFL GM, um, he does not think Aaron Rodgers makes the Jets a Super Bowl contender. And he said... You know, basically the offensive line. 
So I, I was thinking about this this morning. That um, Matt Stafford goes to the Rams. It's a really good offensive line. PFF had it one of the best offensive lines. And Tom Brady went to the Bucks. It was the seventh rated offensive line. So as quarterbacks get older, they want comfort and more comfort and more time to throw. But it doesn't stop there. When Peyton Manning went to the Denver Broncos as an older quarterback, that Bronco O-line was rated fourth best O-line. Older Peyton Manning had surgeries, never a great mover, running less, moving less. Wants comfort, wants time. Joe Montana, let's go further back to the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, they had Will Shields, Pro Bowl left tackle. They had, a, they had a guard and a center who would later be pro bowlers. It was a really good offensive line. Joe Montana was successful. How about Brett Favre to the Vikings, 12-4 and four Vikings? That was a really good offensive line. Steve Hutchison, Hall of Fame guard. Sullivan, the center, was good. Bryant McKinney made a pro bowl that year at left tackle. Stafford, Brady, Montana, Manning, Favre. What do they have in common? They weren't all great defenses. They weren't all great head coaches. They weren't all great wide receivers, all excellent offensive lines. Because as quarterbacks get older and they've got a few surgeries and dings, they start moving less. What have Jay Mack and I talked about multiple times with Aaron Rodgers in the last year? They don't run as much. They don't want to get hit as much. He's got that bank account, the psychedelic conference. Older quarterbacks don't want to get hit. So the Jets offensive line, let me give you an example of a star quarterback that goes to a team with the bad old line. How'd it work? We just saw it, Russell Wilson to Denver. It was a shaky O-line that lost their best offensive lineman, Garrett Bowles, left tackle week five. Awful. Never recovered. Biggest problem. Not much time to throw. Bad coach. Season. Man overboard. So it matters. The O-line is what nobody talks about because nobody's got those guys on their fantasy teams. 99% of fans even in their hometown, can't go left tackle to right tackle and name all the starters. We don't pay attention to offensive line. We pay attention to defensive line because they get sacks. We pay attention to corners and receivers and the hard-hitting linebacker and the star safety and the quarterback and the running back. We don't pay attention to offensive lines. They're really the key to older quarterbacks anytime they pivot to another franchise. Stafford, Favre, Brady, Manning, Montana, all Excellent top five offensive lines when they moved. So it's nothing against Elijah Vera Tucker. He's a guard. They have a huge question mark at left tackle. They've got a question mark at right tackle. They've got a rookie at center. I'm sure Lakin Tomlinson, I was told, is solid. That's, that's nice. They've got a promising young guard off an injury and another solid guard. But Mike Tannenbaum's talking about something that we don't talk about. Older quarterbacks seek time and comfort, and it's very possible in a division with Belichick's defense and Buffalo's defense, Aaron Rodgers struggles, at least in those four games, to get comfortable. That's not a reach. That's not clicky. That's actually the honest truth, and Mike Tannenbaum hit on it. All right. Very, very interesting show. NBA draft tonight. Uh, 49ers apparently have bailed on Trey Lance. Damian Lillard, I keep hearing this. Yesterday, the big story was the Blazers have shut down trade talks with Damian Lillard. We are keeping him. <laughs> okay. At 8.15 p.m. tonight, if they draft Scoot Henderson, how long is that going to last? I ain't got all time. I have drawn a line in the sand. We are not moving. And the Blazers with the third pick take Damian Lillard's replacement, Scoot Henderson. You think maybe they'll change their opinion? <laughs> I don't know. When I hear line in the sand, we've shut down all trades. I'm going to wait till 814 tonight, Eastern time, just to make sure that's true. Because I'm not sure it is. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.